a respected session chair, myself, Akim Mohyuddin Khande. I am currently associated with the Department of Computer Science and Software Engineering, United Arab Emirates University, UAE. Today, I am going to present our research work, COML, Machine Learning Based Approach for COVID-19 Related Suicidal Ideation Detection. My co-authors are Salah Boktif and Arioni. This uh, will be the contents or uh, contents of my today's talk. That will, I will start with the introduction about the suicidal ideation and what is the role of machine learning in identifying suicidal ideation from social media. Then I will be focusing on what is the related work that has been done in this area. And then I will be focusing on the challenges we faced while performing this uh, research work. Then I will be discussing the proposed methodology that was adopted for solving this kind of task. Then I will be discussing about the experimental setup. And then I will discuss about the results we have generated from our experiments and uh, how we concluded the study and what are the future directions. So let's go with the introduction. Going to the introduction part, like the suicide, uh, suicide is a kind of disease and according to the statistics provided by World Health Organization, the average rate of one incident is every 40 seconds. That means in every 40 seconds there is a one case of suicide, suicide attempt. Around 700,000 people die by suicide annually. And understanding how individuals are calculate thoughts related to the distress is crucial for preventing numerous cases of suicide. There is one thing uh, related to the mental illness that is social stigma. There is a social stigma is linked to the mental illness as uh, the human beings feel shy in uh, discussing this mental illness. While as posting on the social media uh, about their mental illness is easy. So users are posting about their mental health on social media. So in this study we are focusing this social media platforms for identifying this suicidal ideation. Then we have the role of COVID-19 add with the pandemic as the er uh, pandemic erupted over the whole world. It has its devastating uh, side effects on economy, on like we can say social isolation was there, there was uncertainty and it has a long term effect on, on mental health. So here in this research we are discussing the role of COVID-19 on suicidal ideation, how COVID-19 impacted the mental health of a human being by using the data of social media. Fear of contracting during the COVID-19 or concerns about the health of oneself or loved ones can contribute to, to the anxiety and distress. So understanding the link between the COVID-19 and suicidal ideation we can give us valuable insights to help the public health efforts in the future pandemic because once we check the link between the COVID-19 and the suicidal ideation or we can say mental distress, we'll be able to, uh, to avoid the future consequences of the pandemics that are going to happen or that may happen in future. So identifying the risk factors, the patterns, interventions and how policies can be aimed to reduce the mental health uh, which has been done by the pandemic. So this is the statistics from last uh, like I can say last six years starting from 2018 to 2020 to 2022 as we can see in this statistics as provided by American psychologists uh, for suicidal prevention this is an organization which provided us the statistics about how the suicide how the people have experienced the mental health conditions or we can say the suicide since in 2018 it can be seen there were around 57 percent of the population uh, like uh, reported about the mental health issue while as in 2020 this issue has been up like there is an up in percentage it's about 60 percent while as in 2022 it can be seen in this statistics or in this histogram that it's about 67 percent so there's a steep rise in the like mental health problem that have been reported by the individuals uh, by the individuals to this organization in the USA. So then by this we can induce that the COVID-19 has impacted the mental health of a person. So in order to do, in order to identify what were the indicators, what are the main contributing factors for this suicidal ideation, we performed some tasks. So this is the related work, how 
the work, how the machine learning, how the artificial intelligence has helped us in identifying this suicidal ideation. It can be seen, I have put the most relevant five papers, uh, five or six articles in this, like in article number first or in citation number seven, a machine learning based binary classifier has been proposed on the data set tutor. We have used the term frequency in the document frequency with the bag of words, but the research gap here is only the tutor data is used. So tutor is only not only the single source by which we can uh, identify the suicidal ideation that has been happening all across the globe. So in order to achieve it can be seen there are only term frequency, inverse document frequency, LIWC features, POS tagging, and some behavioral, and most of the research has been done on the tutor. So in order to move forward, we have the challenge. The challenge uh, in this research work, what we faced while the social media platforms have the strict data access policy. So main thing here was the data from where we can generate, we can extract the data. Second thing is, uh, suicidal related con uh, content is sensitive, the privacy is there. So we have the challenge that we have to, uh, ha we have the privacy issue, we have the privacy rights of the individual such that the individual cannot be explored or cannot be uh, like um, explored to the world. So in order to save that, we have to make every data as a private, like the privacy issues are there. Third thing is language on the social media is dynamic and is changing rapidly. By this we mean that there is a semantic change wherever a single person is posting, for example, a person is posting about his suicidal uh, thoughts, but he is putting an emoji or the happy emoji or he is push, putting an emoji related to the fiction. So we have to check that. We have to handle those fictions as well. So these were the challenges what we face in our research. So this is the proposed methodology, how we performed all these tasks. We have collected the data related to the suicide from the Reddit, uh, Reddit media platform, social media platform, uh, from the suicidal watch. Out of this, we need to have the COVID-19 related data. That means the data that has been generated in COVID-19 and that have the suicidal ideation. For this, we performed two filtering techniques. We performed, like we filtered out the data which we have collect, uh, collected from the suicidal watch. Uh, so we filtered it out using two different filter mechanisms. One was the emotion filtering. First of this data, of this Reddit data, we performed emotion filtering. In emotion filtering, we perform what are the posts are sad, which are happy, which are like uh, shows angry. So here we shortlisted only the sad posts, angry posts, in order to get the more insights. What are the reasons that the person are angry? What are the reasons that the person are expressing their sadness using this post? Second uh, part of this filtering was like we use the toxicity detection, whether the toxic words are used or toxic words are not used. So in order to do this, we perform a toxicity, uh, toxicity detection in which we propose, uh, calculate the toxicity score in which we have 0 0.5 threshold. Out of 0 0.5 threshold, the above uh, posts which have the th which have the value of toxicity score value uh, greater than 0 0.5, they are being followed, they are being forwarded to the feature engineering phase and others are discarded. Because we have to check what are the reasons uh, in the COVID-19 pandemic that triggered this mental illness, this suicidal related ideation. So the third phase in our research is feature engineering, which I will be discussing in the coming slides. Then we performed machine as well as ensemble learning techniques in order to get the prediction whether this content is related to the suicide or not related to the suicide. So here, this is a data collection like I have put the screenshot on the right hand side of this slide like the uh, Reddit data, uh, Reddit platform is used for uh, this, uh, for the collection of the data because it has, a, Reddit is used because it has a diverse user base. Everyone who has a suicidal tendency discusses the various topics about it, various topics in, in this platform. So uh, uh, as well as there was one more concern which I discussed was the challenge that was about the privacy. So here the Reddit users often remain anonymous, like we don't have to discuss about uh, his identity or his or her identity, so this is private. So Reddit ac uh, attracts users from around the world. Everyone around the world are using Reddit platforms, so we uh, like choose this platform. And this is uh, like screenshot discuss. Uh, we have the only two uh, columns. One column is the text. Whatever the text, whatever the text has been posted, and second column is the label. What is the label? Whether this post is non-suicidal or whether this post is suicidal. 
So second in data preparation, like we had a day, uh, this whole data set, then I discussed already about emotion filtering, like we performed, we shortlisted based on sad, negative posts, sad, negative posts are filtered out and they are being supplied to the toxicity detection phase. In toxicity detection, we calculated the toxicity score and we have a threshold, like uh, we have a threshold of 0 0.5. If the threshold is greater than 0 0.5, they are shortlisted and we have the final corpus. Out of final corpus, this is the emotion analysis, like this is a screenshot, how the positive, negative, anticipated, like negative, trust, uh, we have happy emotions are being filtered out. The basic emotion-based technique, dictionary-based uh, technique is being used for identifying this emotion. So then the toxicity is being checked, like we checked uh, uh, bullying or obese uh, language, that the harassment that have been, uh, the harassment words that have been used in this text. Uh, in order to like uh, get more insights of the suicidal ideation from these posters and what are the reasons, what are the main factors that are contributing for this suicidal ideation. So we have the 0 0.5 toxicity uh, score threshold. So the posts who have, which have greater than this uh, 0 0.5 toxicity score that are being shortlisted and we have the final corpus. And out of three, 348,000 uh, 348, uh, records, uh, around uh, 3,154 records are filtered out, in which around 1,339, that means 42.45% of the corpus, final corpus is suicidal, and 57.55% is non-suicidal. And this can be seen, this is a kind of, this can be seen as a balanced data, because it is not like we have 90% of non-suicidal data and 10% of suicidal data, and that is creating biasness. So in order, we have already a kind of biased value, a balanced data set, so we can perform this machine learning or ensemble learning classification. Going towards the uh, data pre-processing second stage, as we have the textual data, we have only two columns. One is the textual column, another one is the label column. In order to pre-process, in order to um, train a machine learning, we need to convert this text into the vector form. So first we have to pre-process it, then we have to uh, perform feature engineering. In order to in order to do this uh, data pre-processing, we have the corpus. The corpus is being the noise is being removed, like the redundancy is being removed, then we have clean data, then we perform the basic pre-processing techniques of the, this uh, natural language processing, like text mining, we have normalization, we have tokenization, we, ha we are removing the stop words, we are stemming the words to their root words. Then we have the pre-processed data. Now out of pre-processed data, l l this is the experimental, whole experimental setup, set up like we have Reddit data, then we have Kalina data, then we are filtering based on the TFID, uh, filtering, uh, after filtering, then we have the pre-processed data, the pre -pro Kalina, uh, this pre-processed data goes to two feature engineering techniques, that is TFID and bag of words. These two techniques are used in collab, like these are used in hybrid, they are both used. So after getting the feature extraction, we simply pull, we simply supply these feature features to those ensemble and machine learning algorithms which I have written here. We have used support vector machine, logistic regression, random forest, name based, neural network and the voting. Then they give us the uh, predictions whether the posts are suicidal or non-suicidal. So these are the results which we generated from these uh, machine and ensemble learning techniques. It can be seen from this comparative study chart like uh, we have the neural network which is giving us the highest accuracy among all machine as well as ensemble learning algorithms by giving us a precision of 94, recall of 94.1 and F1 score of 94.2. This is the main balance, balanceness of this neural network. So we have an overall accuracy of 94%. So in order to, this is the confusion matrix of the uh, neural network like we have true positive, like we have true negative, and these are the ROC curves and precision recall curve of this neural network which has shown highest performance. In order to validate our approach, we use it tenfold cross validation. So this is the results for the tenfold cross validation. Like it can be seen, the average accuracy is exactly the same as the testing accuracy. So we can say that our model is reliable. So this is the going to the conclusion part in this work. 
like the suicidal ideation of the Reddit posts are performed, data is collected from the Reddit social media platform, hybrid feature engineering, integrated state of art feature selection techniques like two techniques are merged together, and the hyperparameter tuning is being performed for various machine learning classifiers. The results showed that the neural network algorithm performed better. Uh, among all other classifiers by having a precision of 94%, recall of 94%, F1 score of 94% and an overall accuracy of 94%. Going to the future scope, like in future, like we are currently uh, exploring this problem, we are using the explainable AI to extract them what are the most contributing factors that leads to the suicidal ideation. And the second thing is, like we are going to use in future the multimodal data, like we are using going to use images, with audio, with video, such that we can have the more efficient accuracy which uh, can be used for saving a life or for saving a human being's life. So this is, uh, 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 these are the references which we consulted and thank you so much. If anyone has questions, he can post or he can email me at the Akib at the rate of uaeu.ac.e. Thank you so much.